back again today with a little art journal page that I'm making. Um, I'm doing some pretty cool techniques today, so I thought I would make it an art instruction video as opposed to just a fast forward art journal video. Um, to prepare my pages though for what we're doing today, I did gesso them twice. Um, I like to gesso first one way and then the other way. It makes the page nice and uniform. Um, if you'd like to add texture, gessoing is a good way to add a very subtle texture to your background as well. You could kind of splotch it around and as it dries it will kind of hold some of that and then you'd have texture for your background. Um, so, sorry, just drinking some coffee on this cold winter day. So, today I want to do a sort of floral spring page, kind of getting the winter blues. Um, I'm also submitting this art journal page to the Unity Stamp monthly blog challenge, so I'm going to try and stay within their guidelines. So I'm going to definitely be doing some stamping and I'm going to be using a color scheme that kind of looks like this. Um, I have some craft paints here, so we got two yellows. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use, maybe both. So we have Sunny Yellow by Folk Art and Medium Yellow. And then I have a beautiful spring green called Apple Orchard. Then going into our blues, I have by Martha Stewart, Pool. And then the rest are Folk Art. I have Cayman Blue. And last but not least, a purple violet pansy. So we're going to try and use these colors, or this color scheme, for this art journal paint. I don't know if I'm actually going to be using them as paints. I was thinking of maybe going with my art journal, um, going with my art markers and trying to create some sort of watercolor effect. And then I'm going to make some sort of vase or flower holder and then we're going to have flowers coming out and we're going to make them dimensional with coffee filters. Okay, so quite a bit going on. I haven't really done anything two dimensional in this book, so kind of for the reason of I don't want to have to fight with it when I work on this page, so we're going to make some dimension but it's not going to be too crazy that it can't go in a book and it's it'll be something that if ever you want to put on canvas you'd be able to build up more on canvas and make your canvas very 3D dimensional, very cool. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I think I'm gonna start with some markers. So I have a beautiful range of markers here. I have some of the Pit Artist pens. Just gonna look and find some colors that will work with what we're doing. These are quite the shades I'm wanting. Um, I'm gonna get my some aqua markers out too. So I have a lot more shades of those. I think I'll be able to find something I like better. I often find that when I'm creating that sometimes one material is better than the other. In this case, the aqua markers are better in the sense that they have the colors I really want. And I should be able to get a cool technique out of them too. So yeah, so I think I'm going with the aqua markers. They just look more spring-like to me. Here we have straw yellow, sunburst yellow, frost blue, aquamarine, Mediterranean, citrus, celery, um, spring green, not sure if I'm going to use that, and royal purple. So I'm going to start by just scribbling a bunch of these colors on my pre gessoed page. Make sure it's dry when you do this. And literally, 
just scribbling. Um, because they're aqua markers, they're just going to kind of sit above the gesso. They're not really going to get absorbed in any way. Kind of like the same way watercolors work. And that's, I think, what I really want today. Don't want too much purple, I don't think. Just beautiful, vibrant colors. I really, really like these markers. They're so much fun to play with once you figure out how to play with them. You just experiment a bit and then you can do all these cool techniques. Of course, what we're going to do, you could also do in um, watercolor. But the markers are just so easy to kind of like between the two of them. Now I know it doesn't look like I'm making anything in particular, just scribbling. But it's all going to come together in a minute or two when I add my secret weapon here. Oh, just gotta fill in this corner here. And I'm hoping this works. I've never actually done what I'm about to do before, so it might fail and flop miserably, but I'm sure we'll be able to recover it somehow anyways. Okay, so we have all our colors on there, all our beautiful spring colors. And I'm gonna get my trusty water bottle right here. I'm gonna spray it all. And just kind of rub these colors around. Now because we just said the page, the colors are not in any way really stuck down. They are just floating on top of the paper. So when I spray them with the water, it kind of reactivates the watercolor ink that they have inside of them. And it allows them to blend around like this. Okay. So, very cool stuff. Now, also because they are so easy to blend around, you have to be careful when you start using other mediums on top. Just kind of get to that petal. That they don't lift off again. But we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna just dry this page with my dryer. I'll be right back. Okay, so that is all dried now. Um, I got a really cool effect as, like, as I dried it a bit, there were still some puddles and I just kind of dabbed it with my towel and it went into the gesso a bit and pulled out some of it. So it actually put some really nifty white texture on it. I don't know if you can really see that. Super cool though. It's very kind of, I don't know, rustic-ish. So now I'm going to add some texture with some stamps. I have here some, a diamond stamp by Unity Stamp Co. It's part of their February 2013 kit of the month. It's this one right here. So I'm just going to kind of stamp it in the sky with white ink. It's going to be subtle, but I don't want too much going on when I get those flowers up. So we're just going to put it on the block. And I'm using Memories Pigment Ink Pad in Unicorn, which I think I'm going to have to dry with my dryer after. I've never had too much luck with it just drying on its own. But it's supposed to be permanent, so that's kind of why I'm going for it. Okay, so I've stamped it kind of randomly around the paper. You can really see it on the darker spots. Um, it's a nice little nifty white pattern. Just those three triangles, but if you're careful about it, you can kind of make it look like it continues on its own, like right down there. So I just need to dry this up just so that I can continue creating on top of it. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. Um, the white ink didn't dry as fast as I would have liked, so I just sprayed the whole thing with um, 
work will fix it. I was gonna spray it with this anyways after because of the watercolor markers underneath. I don't want them lifting up when I apply other applications of stuff. So it was going to happen anyways. Um, the workable fixative, you just be sure you spray that outside. It's poisonous and everything, so you wanna be careful with that, okay? So all of this is now set for our purposes. So we're gonna start thinking about how we're gonna do this whole flower box thing. And what I was thinking is I have all these super cute vintage postcards. Um, I picked them up at a flea market and some of them are quite quite old and ratty but that's, that's what vintage is sometimes. So I was thinking of using one of these postcards as part of a vase or a box. Now I didn't want to use these original postcards particularly in my art journal. I only have four of them. I'm definitely going to be on the hunt for more in the summer when all the flea markets open again. But to me my art journal is for experimenting and I don't want to use these beautiful objects in there when they can maybe be later incorporated into art or even better yet just photocopied. So that is what I did. I used my printer and I photocopied them so that I could do whatever I wanted with them and if I messed it up it wasn't such a big deal because I'm not losing anything very valuable. I did print it with an inkjet printer which tends to bleed when you start adding wet materials to it but I once again sprayed it with workable fixatives so it should be alright. So I'm just going to cut these out and then we'll be able to play with them. Okay so I have my three postcards cut out. They look quite honestly just like the originals are pretty much like the originals like here's my photocopy here's my original this one's just a little bit more beat up looking really but for our purposes today these will work just fine um, I don't think I'm gonna use all of them but I figured if I was copying one I may as well copy the others now I think this would be cool having it here and then making it maybe this side. Not quite sure what I want to do with them. My plan for this wasn't very definite, I'll be honest. I just wanted to do some spring flowers in a box using a postcard. The whole scheme of how this was going to get done didn't have very much theory to it. Um, If I go like that, and I just have to. The problem I find with folding books is if you do things on seams, you tend to have issues with it. But if I cut down that seam, it might make it a bit easier for my book to fold later. Um, I just don't want to glue it, and then when I go to turn the page, it's like impossible to turn. So I think I'm going to cut it apart. Kind of help me out here. And see, because we made a copy, if I screw this up, I can just use another one. It's not such a big deal. Okay, so I like that. I know there's a bit of a jump in there, but I like that this will turn and it's not going to cause a whole bunch of ruckus. And I think I'm going to distress them even farther with some distress ink just to help really make them stand out, okay? So we're just going to go along the edges here. Okay. And then if I take a paintbrush, wherever, I have my paintbrushes. I'm just kind of paint along the side here. And because I sprayed this with workable fixative, my actual ink on my card is going to hold up a bit better. So that step of spraying it 
after printing on an inkjet print inkjet printer is a very valuable step. Now, if you did this with um, a laser printer, you wouldn't have to worry about really fixing it at all. It would be fine. I love how this ink interacts with water. It's just so super cute. Okay, so here we go. So we have that part of it. Now we're not gonna glue it down until we've done our flowers and everything, okay? I don't want to necessarily commit until I'm ready. So our flowers are gonna be using coffee filters. I have a bunch of these in my art room because our coffee machine doesn't use coffee filters. So I may tend to use these a lot. Um, I think a layer of four will be good for the petals. Eh. I'm just gonna put this out of the way for now. Out of the way. So we have four. And I'm gonna initially keep these white. So I'm just going to kind of stack them on top of each other and then I'm going to cut circles and those are going to be our flowers. Think kind of like white poppies, okay? So I'm just going to cut those out and then we'll continue. Okay, so I've cut out seven groups of circles and I've tried keep them all on top of each other. Um, we're going to be gluing them in the middle now to kind of create our blossom. You don't have to glue them. If you have those little um, brads, I think they're called, you can just poke those through the middle and that's fine. I don't really have those on hand and I figured showing you this would be helpful to most people as a lot of people probably don't have those little metal do hickey things on hand. So I'm going to show you a different way so that everyone can kind of play along and do this. So I'm just going to, so we're going to be using Mod Podge to kind of glue our blossoms together and just the end of a paintbrush I'm going to, we're going to take all this to the side. We're going to do the one. So we're going to take all our layers apart and this one apparently only has two layers which is fine. We're just going to Dab some Mod Podge stuff in the middle, push this layer on top, boom, done, flower. Next one, take these layers apart. Apparently I lost one of my coffee filters in this process. This one only has two as well. Press down on top, good. And again, unless this goes. Yeah, I think this goes with that. So we're gonna just keep layering them on top of each other. Because the coffee filter's so, so thin, the Mod Podge just grabs at it. It doesn't take very much to kind of glue it into a blossom, really. There we go. You want to keep your dot of glue fairly small. That way you'll be able to ruffle up your flowers more. And it does spread within the coffee filter. So just be aware, if your entire circle is glued to your other entire circle. You're not going to be able to ruffle up the feathers and make a blossom like I'm going to show you in a minute. Oh, just lost that one. Apparently these flowers don't want to work very well for me today. I use these in a, um, a mixed media canvas that I made probably about a year ago and it worked out super well. And I did layers. I think it must have been six or more layers to get a very cool dimensional almost half globe of a blossom. 
It's just so adorable. And it's so easy. Why spend all those, all that money on flowers when you just make your own with coffee filters that are super cheap. Art doesn't have to be expensive. It can, if you know how to use the materials around you, you can manipulate them so that you have, you can make amazing stuff. Just amazing stuff. So this is our last blossom. Oh, that one flying. It's our last blossom here. And then we're gonna color some of them. Not all of them. I wasn't gonna color any at first, but I think some of them just need some color. Just make the page a little bit more colorful. Okay, so just let those all kind of dry. I'll close this up and keep it close by. We'll need it for later. So let's go to our first blossom, which Mod Podge dries super fast, so it's very ideal for this. We're just gonna ruffle it all forward, and then we're gonna unruffle it a bit. And we're gonna just take that top blossom part. There you go. It's a super cute flower. Okay. Very much like a poppy. So same, well that one feels a bit wet. You don't want to do them while they're still wet, so try to go for your ones that are dry. So we're going to ruffle the whole thing forward, just pinch it forward, okay? We're going to unruffle it very carefully, and then you're going to take that top petal layer, and you're going to, again, ruffle it forward a bit. It just gives the illusion that these are those very, very delicate, like, poppy flower petals, just kind of ruffled and literally paper thin, tissue paper thin. So it really gives a very cool illusion of that. Well, not really illusion, it really is paper th tissue thin paper being all ruffled up. And these can sometimes be fiddly. Just fiddle until you get the flower looking the way you want them to. The ones that have more than two layers, you just kind of work layer by layer, ruffling them up real nice. So we have these very nice flowers. And yeah, they just kind of look like um, circles of crumpled paper, but we're gonna give them some dimension and really make them look pretty, okay? So this one too. And if they do happen to unglue, sometimes it happens, just glue them back together. It's not anything to get upset about. Like I said, these can be fiddly, but the results are just so beautiful that it's kind of worth the fiddling for. Okay, so now to give our flowers some sort of life, I'm gonna use my yellow aqua marker and I'm just gonna define the middle of them by adding some dots to make that little middle seed part of them. Oops, that one's not even wrinkled. And then I'm also gonna take, um, I think I'm gonna take a light green and just do a couple dots in the middle of them. Like maybe three on each one, just to kind of break up that yellow a bit. Okay, so we have these five gorgeous looking little poppy flowers. And then, so I'm gonna keep these three to be white, I want these two to be bluish. So we're going to take my marker and I hope this works. 
I really, really do. Just a wet paintbrush on hand. I'm gonna go around the edges of this petal with my aqua marker and then just kind of dab it with water. Or maybe dab it with water first. <laughs> And the water just makes the, um, I don't know if you can even really see that. The water just really pulls the color into the middle and will give it that really nice papery look. So we're just going to go around the edges with water here too. And these are coffee filters, so you know they'll hold up to water. They can hold all your grinds in your coffee machine when they're soaking with water. They can hold up to a bit there. Okay. So we have our flowers, we want these ones to dry and we're probably going to have to re-ruffle them quite honestly, but put those to the side. And we're going to bring back our book. Yay. I'm missing part of that postcard. That's gonna go there. And then we're just gonna figure out a way to place these flowers around in a nice random order. I like odd numbers, so I always choose fives or sevens or whatnot. So I think that will be pretty cute. So I'm gonna glue down this card. I'll be right back. Um, yeah. I think my camera battery is dying, so I'll be back in probably a couple hours as it charges. Okay, bye. Okay, so I'm back with a charged battery. Um, so we're going to continue with our art journal page. So I used um, Mod Podge to put down my copied postcard, and I did cut it so that I'll be able to fold my pages really good. And I won't have problems with that kind of catching and making a bigger than necessary bulge. And now I'm going to start planting my flowers. So I made the flowers and my blue ones have dried with the little blue bits around the edges. So they're super cute. So we're just going to try and place them in order that kind of makes sense to me I guess. Okay, so I kind of like that. This is our flower box, remember? And these are all our little flowers. Now I do want these to have a little bit of definition just because they're kind of getting lost in the light part of our page. So I'm going to take my Distress Ink and I'm just going to lightly go across the edges or rub the edges against it. Doesn't even have to touch all the edges, just a few. See how that stands out just a little bit better than it did before. Just very, very lightly, barely even a touch. And it kind of defines all the other petals for you too. I think I'm going to do it even on the colored ones. Really want these beautiful little morsels of flowers to show up nice. So there we go. And I'm not going to glue them down quite yet. I have, I want to, kind of want to darken part of the page, so what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take, um, what color, okay, we're going to take Windsor Noon Blue here, um, I'm not going to use my craft paints because I want this to be kind of transparent actually, so I'm just going to get my palettes and everything. So I got my acrylic palette here and I'm going to take Glaze Medium by Golden and plop a big little bit there. I don't need very much because I'm not covering very much. And this is actually kind of the color that I'm painting on. I'm going to take my paint and just a dollop. Not very much needed at all. And 
just going to take a large, largish paintbrush. I'll take this one, it's a two inch angle. I'm just gonna mix it up. go that looks about right and I'm gonna put this on this side I'm gonna move my little flowers out to the side I'm just gonna now this seems like a lot here on this corner probably seems like too much but I'm gonna actually take this bigger brush that's dry and we're just going to completely blend it in by just going back and forth and kind of all over. So it just made that whole side darker. It actually makes my pattern there with the stamp stand out more. Let's take some more color here. I'm just going to blend it in. Now, this is sort of a fearless technique. If you're going to be worried about screwing up, you might, you might want to take a big deep breath before you do this. There's not, when you start really, really blending things, here I'm just kind of doing small little circles with this brush. When you really start blending things, you don't have a whole lot of control over it, I must say. You're just kind of going with the flow and whatever that flow is going to give you. Now, because it's acrylic, you can still kind of control it with water and paper towels and everything like I'm doing now. Just erasing what I don't want and then just dab on with paper towel. I get that white back. It's important to use a dry brush for your blending brush. It really, really is. Um, that's why I'm kind of alternating between the two. This one that has all this paint, there's tons of paint in the bristles, and that's just going to smudge all over the place, whereas this one, which looks like has a bunch of paint, it's barely even there because it's dry and we're moving around such a small morsel of paint that barely affects anything. Now because we're putting the paint on so thin, it's really going to dry fast, okay? Like, you gotta work quick, you gotta work in sections. Um, if you're not sure about something, you gotta have your water right there and ready to kind of get rid of it. Here I'm just scrubbing some water. So I'm scrubbing some of it away, but not all of it away, and just leaving some cool texture. Now because we put that fix, work well fixative on top, our lower layers are completely protected against what we're doing here. So and the glazing medium really helps to lift off the paint even after it's been dry. It takes some scrubbing, you won't get it all completely off, but you get some of it off. Still, keeping in mind, you do still want to work fast because you don't know when this stuff is... The one time that you really need it off is probably going to be the one time that it doesn't come off for you. Okay, so I... Really, really like how that blue turned out against like the purples and everything. I really, really brought my purple to life, I must say. Wasn't so much a fan of it with the yellows, but purple, it was beautiful. Just beautiful. And 
and you think these brushes might be too big for this page, but they really sort of give you just a freedom of expression, really. Like, they're big enough that you only have so much control over it, so you're just letting the paint do its thing and going with the flow, really. I love it. Okay, so then I'm just gonna drop some water drops all over this and let them sit for a little bit and they will lift wherever I had glazing medium, really. It's kind of a neat little accidental trick that I discovered a long time ago when painting. Sometimes you don't want it to do this, but in this case it gives us a little bit more texture here. My towel is giving me a bit more. I don't really want, want that to be a little light. Now because we did mix glazing medium and paint, and I will admit we didn't mix it very well, um, some of these sections might just be acrylic paint and they might not come off as well. So that's something you're going to have to kind of live with if you're not sure. but. This is an art journal, so it is meant to be experimented in. Oh, look at that. Nice and grungy, eh? I can't believe how grungy we can make this and still make it look sweet. So I'm just going to go around and wash these brushes. They're too big for my cup. I'll be right back. Okay, so my brushes are all washed. So now we're going to put these petals back on here. Kind of, sort of as I remember them. I should, probably should have kept better notes on that. Down. I think they're actually in a different spot but I like them better this way. And as I said earlier I love odd numbers they just seem so much more natural so we're gonna stick with the oddities and so this is where our flowers are. Now I'm just going to take a uh, pencil crayon will work and just kind of mark the center of each one and remove them. I want to do the stems before I glue them down, just I don't want them in the way when I do my stems. You could glue them down, but I don't know, it's up to you. Either way it works. This is just, I guess, my process. So next I'm going to draw the stems with a acrylic marker. This is a Montana paint marker, so it is acrylic paint. Um, it's a beautiful green color. Um, you just it's extra fine and the color is shock green light. So I'm just going to shake this up. You can probably hear it. And I'm going to just start drawing my stems out. So just going to go from where my X's are down. And the great thing is this is paint so it's just totally going to go over on top of everything. And I'm going to have no problems with it staying and all that. So it'll be perfect. So I'm just going to fast forward this and I will be back when we're all done. Okay, so I've drawn all my stems. Um, these markers are really convenient for doing thin lines, but they're kind of transparent in some cases, so I don't know if, like if you really wanted thick lines, you might just be better using some acrylic inks. I don't really own acrylic inks, so I don't know how this would match up against it, if the inks would still kind of be transparent, but Either way, we, we have our stems, just like I want. Now, I also want to do a bit more stamping. So, we are going to take, where did I put that? We're going to take this gray stamp pad, and get this one off. We have our little stamping block. I'm going to take this little abstract flower stamp from Unity Stamp Co. It's called Feel the Joy. And I'm going to use it just to create some shadows of flowers and everything here. And I don't 
want it. I don't really want it past the postcard. Let's see how well this works. hindsight can't really see my stems that well anymore which is unfortunate so I'm going to go over them with my white Montana paint marker um, just gonna give them like some highlighting with it so we put our flowers back it's not horrible by any means in there. So that's where our flowers would go. And I really got green all over that, but whatever. Maybe we'll add some little detailing here. With my white marker since we have it out. I love doing these little round scallop borders with circles on top. I don't know why they just seem ridiculously cute to me. Beautiful. Okay, and maybe we'll put some up here as well. Kind of unify everything, right? These marker pens definitely take some getting used to. I'll say that much. There, our leaves are kind of all different colors now. I know usually yellow leaves mean that they're dying, but I think it works in this case. Some yellow down here too. Make sure we have it kind of uniformly all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to glue down my flowers. I think I'm just going to use gel medium because I really don't want to pull out my glue gun. Just seems like it's a lot to plug it in and heat it up just for a couple little flowers. So I'm going to use some golden soft gel medium. It doesn't really matter. Anything that will glue something down will work for this. Really. Being that they're coffee filter flowers, they're not going to take too much to hold them down. And being that they're in a book, once we close the book, they're just going to get pressed farther into the page. So I'm not worried about them going away at all. And I know my lighting's not too great right now, too. You can't really see a lot of the little details. I wish it was a lot better, but my batteries died when I had my good lights. So we're just going to have to deal with this. Now, so we have our flowers. We have our flower box. Um... I want my flowers to be a little bit more defined, so I don't know if I want to go in with black or if I want to. So I'm going to, to go in with paint. I don't don't really want to use black for this. It's a little too harsh, so I'm going to use Cobalt Turquoise by Windsor & Noon. They came out with a bunch of new colors recently, and this is one of the ones I ordered, and I must say I absolutely love it. Love, love, love it. Some colors you're just not sure what you're gonna get till you get them, and sometimes you're disappointed. This one, just completely love it. So, I'm just gonna go down.
And because that looks super harsh, we're going to take our trusty paint rag and just kind of wipe it off and try again. <laughs> wipe it off and try again. And see that coffee filter just loves that water. Just loves it. Okay, let's try this again. A little thinner this time. That's a lot better. That's like a crooked one. Just the middle stems, I think. And the insides of the leaves. You know how sometimes the leaves have a colored core, I guess? Let's go that way. I think doing all of the, um, the outlines of the leaves is just too much and it's really going to take away from the colors and this nice crisp spring look that we got going on here. And this way it'll just draw your eye to where all the detail really is and then your eye will just take it from there. I've actually been taking a lot of my unfinished paintings and adding this color to them and it's just its a gorgeous, gorgeous color, especially when you put it on in translucent layers. It just really brings everything out. I love, love, love it. It's just, uh, like I do often mix it with glazing medium and then put it on top and it just really brings out all the other colors, especially when there's reds and stuff underneath, just beautiful. Let's see if we... Eh, no, don't really like that. Okay, so we have our flowers. Gonna add some more yellow to these leaves, I think. lovely flowers and they got their leaves are in their cute little flower pot now we just need to sing um, and so I have the option to just stamp a saying on which I think I might uh, I don't know my stamp saying that I was thinking about was another one by Unity and it says keep your face to the sunshine and you cannot see a shadow. It's part of their Phyllis Harris line and it could go right there but it's not really... I thought everything was going to take up more room and it didn't and that just doesn't seem adequate for it. So I'm going to ponder a little bit some sayings or... Uh, Actually, I got it. Eh, no, maybe not. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I got it, figured it out, Googled a little, found something that kind of really spoke to me. It's a or what I'm told is a John Lennon quote, it's going to be, love is the flower you've got to let grow. Okay, so I'm going to do that in white. And if white doesn't work, we're gonna go over it with black, okay? So just bear with me, this will probably take a while because I'm gonna try and make it all pretty like, so I'll just fast forward through, okay? Okay, so I think I'm all done this page. Um, 
you'll be able to see the text when I show you, or see the text better when I show you the um, pictures of the finished product. Product. It's not very high contrast the writing, but I do really like how it looks against the watercolor and I don't want a dark color for it. So I think I'm going to stick with that and I'll just wait for it to dry and then I'll take some pictures of it and post them at the end of this video. Um, yeah, so beautiful background with the Letraset Aqua Markers because of the gesso and then we fixed it with the workable fixative and it was like as though it was paint. Like it never came off for anything. It was perfect and it was so easy to work with. I think a lot more vibrant than watercolors over gesso would have been and they didn't pool as much so we got more punches of color. So yeah, so here's our little springtime garden themed box of cute little flowers. Okay, so happy art journaling.